Hello everyone. So today we are going to implement this procedural train. By procedural what I mean is we can dynamically change the number of cars attached to the train. We can go anything. Let me add 20. So and also we have this circular train track which is also procedurally generated including these trusses and these ties we worked on that yesterday today we are going to focus on this train and its movement so here is the demonstration so train can nicely move along this given track at the moment if these are just simple models but later on i'm going to improve so that maybe player can get in get into this uh, train one of these cars and travel in the train so yeah it works nicely let's complete one loop and then let's get into the tutorial okay one loop is completed so let's see how to implement this system today so i have completed a circular track as you can see here see it goes in a complete circle like this and you see this procedurally generated the wooden ties and these trusses to support it is also generated so we worked on that part yesterday and i have modeled and imported this simple train engine and this train car mesh into the engine so i modeled them in blender so it's a pretty simple model and at the moment these are just static measures because i only want to focus on how to move the train engine and the cars along this path so after we figure that out we can work on how to add uh, rotating wheels and all other details that we need okay so first let me just delete these two measures and then here let's create a blueprint in the type of actor yeah. uh, maybe not actor let's use the type horn because it says sometimes we want to control the train as well like the driver so bp train all right so now let me open it and i think i'm gonna keep this default root under that let's attach this engine like this compile and let's drag and drop it here so first in the train i'll create a variable track and track should be in the type of bp rail track so bp rail track 
object reference now I'll make this public so I can set the rare track reference here oh why can't I see that track compile Now I can select the red track. So um, now in the construction script, if we do have a valid track, we can access this line. Component and I'll promote this to a variable track of oh, it. No mm, tracks fly. Okay. Now get location at distance along supply so here i'm going to use the distance zero and location world and also um, get location at distance along supply this also has to be world then set actor location sorry not just location location and rotation set actor location and rotation This is the location, this is the rotation, and compile. Now, see, the train is placed on the beginning of the track. So, this is the beginning point. This one is the first point in the spline. So, it's automatically placed on that. And I have designed the scale of the mesh to fairly match with the track so I think it it's good enough the placement of wheels so right now the next part is moving the train so for that how oh. here even if this is a pawn we can have like a full audience moment component or anything but i for now i don't want to use any of them i just want to move the train through the code so get the track spline and first check if it is valid then get uh, at distance along this line this distance I'll promote it to a variable I'll call it track distance and of course we need the word then get rotation at distance along the spline. Both has to be word. 
and it's distance drag distance now oh well basically we have to do the same thing as here yeah but uh, right set that the location and location Same as before and then we need to move the train so get the track distance and add something so this one is the speed I'll promote that also into a variable compile let's say one I'm not sure oh uh, and then wait we need to multiply this with uh, word delta seconds to make it smooth and independent from the frame rate and set update the track distance like this so to keep it looping if track distance uh, to, so if track distance exceed the length of the track spline we are going to run into a problem so we can get the length then we can do a modulus division with the length so if we get something higher than the length we will get the remainder only here right that's basically all okay save everything and play i think it's moving but very slow so That's great. Okay. So our train is moving. Let's see if it can. Loop without any issue. So it's closer to complete the loop. Yeah, it goes without any issue. So the moment logic is working. Right. Okay. So the next step is adding the cars. Um, for that, here, I'll add a variable in the type of integer 
I'll make it public to num of class and also for this we need to know the length of one car so if I go to the top view press middle mouse button and drag a line is it I can't read 455 okay let's say 500 num of car and also car length should be float and let's try 500 and number of cars let's start with five right now this part is about positioning of the tray so then next part is cars so let's have a for loop starting from zero mm. I think we should start from one and last index so num of cars right here let's add a static mesh component as i said later on we might change these into a skeletal mesh because we need to have rotate and wheels and everything so yeah or maybe a separate child blueprint i'm not sure for now okay so as the mesh we can assign train car and relative transform we can make we can split this and we can keep x and y let's make an array here make vector we can keep x and y zero but for z multiply with the car length and put it here right compile and of course five oh ah sorry not c we should change x sorry Break x compile oh <laughs> it's in forward direction okay so re again car length multiply by minus one right now it's correct so the next uh, challenge is how to make them uh, place along the along the road along the track right uh, one more thing these are uh, okay they are movable already no worries so this is a static mesh component so I'll add a variable cause type is static mesh component object reference and it has to be an array then get class add unique 
even if I use add it wouldn't make a difference at this case I think at here the reason I save it to uh, array is because I need to manipulate the allocations later on okay so after updating the car after adding car components mm, let me do function because we need to call this in the tick as well i'll add a function called update car positions uh, not just position rotations as well so update car update cars get run a for each loop and then uh, track distance get the track distance and also get the index multiplied by car length so what I what I'm going to do is for each uh, car finding the appropriate location and rotation on the track. So this has to be multiplied by minus one because car is always behind the engine, and then add. To the track distance right now if this is negative let's have a branch if this is negative that means we that means for example if the engine is at the beginning of the track if we get a negative length or distance that means we should consider the last points of the spline because it's a circle so what should we do here i'll add another variable another local variable car track distance should be float not an array just to a single variable let's set this so yeah as i said if this is negative we need to get the track spline so this p should not be capital get spline length and add this two together so we will get a point in the end and that is the car track distance otherwise uh, we don't really need to do anything else if it is positive we can directly use it right now after that we can again just like before from the track spline we can get location at distance along the spline word space and get location at uh, distance along supply this also has to be world and then finally we can access this static mesh component let's add a reload mode here otherwise this could be unclear align with Q set world 
location and rotation right I think that's oh wait we need to use car track distance compile and we need to call it update cars compile now you see all the cars are on the track nice and also we need to call this same method in the tick also update pass okay now let's see yeah it's working nicely see some elasticity as well uh, see I don't know the exact word but that looks natural when we have that okay nice so we got only four uh, cars include uh, five cars including the track let's see complete the cycle without any issue it does all right so number of cars why is it four Start from one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Why is it four? Well, we can do one thing. We can make this start from zero and add one here to have the exact number of cars as we have defined. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Do I need to clear? I know. Since this is construction script, I don't think we have to. Okay. Now, if I make it like fifteen, see, we can change to any number of cars as we need. And still it works. All right. Nice. I think we can stop this episode right here. Just like this snack we worked on previously. Oh, I could have reused the same code. Didn't think about it. Okay, let's wait until this complete one circle 
and then I'm gonna stop this episode right here it can complete the circle without any issue okay so thanks for watching as always project files will be available for the download in the patreon page link would be in the description below and if you like to support my work, you can get the membership of the Patreon Club. See you in another episode. Goodbye. Oh, I just noticed we made one mistake. Here. Um, there is a car. Uh, uh, all right so here also we have to add one to make it work properly yeah correct all right now that makes sense originally we shouldn't have to add we can start from one and do it like this now we should have the correct number so that's what has happened okay we can test it if i make it four we see four cars five five cars okay correct and the logic also works without any issue okay so sorry about that mistake and thanks Oh, also I forgot to show one more thing. In the rail track, I had to connect these falls into here. Because if I don't do that, once I hit something, encounter some location that does not have, does not get a hit, then after that point, we don't see these trusses. So no more tracing happens. So. That's also something I forgot to mention and I should have mentioned in the beginning. Okay, thanks again. See you in another episode. Goodbye.